Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is Santa Vanta and it is a medium level problem. So if by the end of this video, you feel that it was helpful for you or if you were able to derive any value from this video, then consider dropping a like and don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments. Any general thing you would like to share or anything about the problem you wanted to talk about, so you can write it down in the comments. As your engagement with this particular video really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video was actually helpful for you and you'll be able to reach more number of people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So the problem statement of this problem is very big but uh, it essentially breaks down to two simple problem statements and actually both of them are very standard problems. So even if you just know what are they, like you don't know how to actually code them, you can just uh, like go out to different sources on the internet. If you just copy paste the like uh, template, even then I would be I believe that it will work. But this video is not about like pasting a template from anywhere. We'll discuss like uh, how we can solve this problem and it's basically a merge of two different standard problems. But still geeks for geeks somehow managed to like uh, even mess up in this particular problem. We'll discuss what they did wrong after we discuss the problem statement. So let us have a look what the question says. So basically they are saying that we have been given a graph. Right, so there will be some people like this. So if one is connected to two, they are directly connected. If two is connected to three, then it means one and three are indirectly connected. They will still be considered in the same group. Right, so we will be given multiple groups like this. There might be some people like this, like this. Right, so basically it's a graph with different connected components. We have to find the greatest of them. Greatest of them means the biggest connected component and let it size be equals to k. Right. Now, now that we have found the biggest connected component, we have to find the kth prime number. Right. So basically, the problem statement. So the problem has been divided into two subtasks, and these are completely independent. Like you can write the code for them like very separately. If we have solved these two problems independently, then you can just copy paste their code. It will still work. They are not at all connected or interrelated. First of all, you will just have to find the uh, size of the max, uh, biggest connected component. Size of biggest connected component. So there are actually multiple ways to solve this. Either you can like do a simple DFS, BFS, DFS or BFS. Or you can just do like uh, a disjoint set, right? So both of these techniques work. And to find the kth prime number, so once you have find the size of the biggest connected component, let it be k. So kth prime number is the second thing that we need to find, right? So when we need to find this, we can easily use a technique called sieve, right? So sieve of Eratosthenes is a very standard uh, thing in number theory, and it is helpful in finding all the prime numbers. So basically, we will have to find the kth prime number. Now talking about the constraints, you like even if you don't know sieve, even if you don't actually understand how sieve works, you can just uh, like uh, use its uh, template from any website like CP algorithms or like even geeks for geeks for that matter. But I would say CP algorithms is a much better place, so you can find it there. But uh, let us discuss some like small details about this problem. So they say the number of people, the number of people are up to 10 to the power 5, right? So what do you think the maximum size of a group can be? The maximum size of a group can be or the value of k can be up to 10 to the power 5. Right? When all the people are in the same group. Right? So when it is up to 10 to the power 5, you will need to find the 10 to the power 5 with prime number. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This prime number. So in order to find this prime number, you need to make sure that your sieve covers this number. Right? So a quick Google search gave me the result then that the 10 is per 5 th prime number is something like 1, 2 and then we have uh, like uh, these number of digits. So there are basically 6 digits after 1 and the first digit is I guess 2. I don't exactly remember but I believe it was 2. Right. So there are 6 digits after it. Now uh, we know that it would be like something like 1.2 into 10 is per 6. So definitely taking the upper bound as 10 to the power 6 will not work. So a safe upper bound can be 2 raised to the 2 into 10 to the power 6. Right. If you take this as an upper bound, then definitely this 10 to the power 5th prime number will be included in our sieve. Right. So let me just tell you how a sieve works. I'll, I'll just give you a brief idea of how a sieve works. 
then you will be able to tell it on your own right i am not going to discuss the whole algorithm i just going to discuss a little like a little bit of idea overall idea so let's say this is uh, one this is two and this is three this is four this is five this is six and let me extend it further seven eight and nine so let's say all of them are initially marked prime right so i am saying that all of them are prime right now obviously zero is not a prime number so i am just going to remove it and mark it as composite number right so now i know that two is a prime number okay good enough so definitely if two is a prime number then all the multiples of two will never be a prime number why because according to the definition of a prime number either one or the number itself should be its divisor right but if any number is a multiple of 2 so let's say 4 is a multiple of 2 then 4 has divisors 1 and 4 and since i am saying that 2 is a divisor of 4 then 2 is also included here so definitely 4 is not going to be a prime number so for all the multiples of 2 i am going to mark it as composite so this is composite this is composite and this is composite so let me just redraw it again now i mark this particular number this particular number and this particular number as composite right similarly when i go to the next number i see that it is currently prime good enough if it is prime then i need to mark all of its multiples as composite so 6 is already like marked as composite and now the next number is 9 so you see that i can mark it as composite right similarly i'll go on continuing for all the prime numbers since 4 is already composite i no need to mark it uh, its multiples as prime because its multiples would have already been covered by another prime number right so i need to repeat this algorithm to mark all of its multiples as composite numbers for only prime numbers so when i reach a composite number i don't need to do anything for it i go to the next number i check whether it is prime or not i then only i mark all of its multiple as composite right there is one more important thing that you need to notice that you see for 2 we started with the first multiple of 2 that was 4 and then we moved on further for 3 we we did not start with the first multiple of 3 that is 6 Six was already marked as composite. We, instead, we started as started with nine, right? Why is this so? Because when we were marking the multiples of two, so it was two into two, that is four, and then two into three, that is six, then two into four, that is eight, right? So you will see similarly there will be other prime numbers like this as well. So all the multiples of three that are less than three. so that is 3 into 2 in this particular case will already be marked by some other number which is smaller than 3 so i need to mark all of its prime all of its multiples from 3 into 3 that is 3 square right similarly if i talk about let's say 5 right so what are the multiples of 5 one multiple of 5 can be 10 the other multiple of 5 can be uh, 15 and the fourth multiple of 5 can be 20 and the fifth multiple of 5 can be So let me just write it properly. So it is five into four, twenty, and the fifth multiple of five is twenty-five. So you see, this particular number ten would have already been marked by two. This particular number fifteen would have already been marked by three. This particular number twenty would have again already be marked by not four but two, because two has marked four, and in, and in the same step, two also marked twenty. Right? Again. this is the only multiple that has not been marked before so whenever for a prime number you are starting marking its multiple as non prime you are always going to start from i into i because all of the smaller numbers would have already been marked by some other number so it is no use of doing them like right? you can do them but like it's literally of no use because they have already been marked as composite so what will be our simple for loop our for loop will start from let's say it is i it will start from 2 and it will go only 10 i into i is less than equals to max size so what is the significance of this particular part i into i is less than equals to max size so we say if there exists a prime divisor of any number right at least one of the prime divisors would be less than or equals to the square root of that number so if there is a number n if there exists a prime divisor or if this number is composite you can write say it in any way if this number is composite at least one of its prime divisor will exist till root n right so we are only going till root n because we just need to find whether the number is prime or not so if this number is not prime or this this number is composite going till root n will give me at least one such prime number that is a divisor of this particular number 
and by proof like by contradiction i can say that this is a non prime member so all that all the things that we are doing in c is just contradiction initially we assumed that all of them are prime and as as soon as we are getting some number which is a divisor of that num uh, another number we are marking that second number as non prime or as composite so this is just a simple contradiction mathematical principle right so we are starting from 2 we are going till square root of n right this part is very simple now if if the ith number if if the ith number is prime what i'll do is i'll go i'll start from let's say j is equals to i into i i into i right j is going to be less than equals to max size max size and since i am marking all the multiples of i i'll increment j by the step of i right so for all these numbers j i am i is prime let's say is prime is my array i'll mark as the jth number as zero or false that the jth number is not prime right now simply when i have got all of these prime numbers i will maintain another vector called primes which will store all the prime numbers so for all the values that are true in this particular array is prime i'll push that value into my is prime is to my primes vector right so this is how i get the list of all the primes now this part is very simple like we are going to implement it using a disjoint set and the way our disjoint set will be working is that initially all of the values will be minus 1 denoting that they are the parent of itself and the size of the that particular connected component is 1 so the way we will be maintaining the disjoint set is that whenever the value at that particular index is negative less than 0 it denotes that it is a parent of itself and the size of this connected component is absolute of disjoint set of i so if it is negative i will take its absolute value now if there is some positive value it's a zero was here that means zero is the parent of this particular node right so this is not a parent of itself zero is the parent of this particular node so a positive value will denote that this is the parent so not exactly positive value it can also be a non negative value because it can also be zero right so all the negative values are denoting that they are parent of itself and the size of that value or the absolute value is denoting the size of the connected component in case there is a non negative value it will denote that that particular ith cell is the parent of this of the current cell right so this is how we are going to maintain our disjoint set and basically you can find this uh, implementation anywhere and you can even use my implementation i'll show you what i have done so this was all about the problem discussion i have discussed uh, like sieve of rattus things in like much detail than i intended to i i just thought if in case you didn't know it, this video will really help you to get an idea but i would still recommend you to like read an article somewhere or watch another video to get a more clear idea this was just a basic introduction to give you like an overview of what sieve of rattus things is to get a more clear idea you can refer to other videos as well and for the design set it is also very standard thing uh, like uh, i would recommend you to watch some uh, video or an article on it and you will be able to understand it easily so basically let us discuss what this design set does and what is the sieve of rattus things as now before starting this part let me just discuss uh, what i felt geeks for geeks did wrong so they say that the input array has been given as a 2d array of dimensions m cross 2 so basically they said that we will be given the edges m is the number of edges and m cross 2 means that the first part will denote the starting point and the second part will denote the ending point so basically we have been given an edge list this is what i can understand from this particular state now also if you see the input uh, input thing then you will observe that uh, they this is some kind of an edge list right but the input that they give us here the vector of vector in graph it is actually an adjacency list and uh, like i confirmed it when i check the driver code you will see that uh, they have created a they have taken n and e n is the number of nodes and e is the number of edges and they are themselves taking input in unv and pushing it into the graph so basically they are like uh, giving us an adjacency list not an edge list this is something that you have to take care of so now let us see what do we have in the pre compute function first so i have created a max size equals to 2 raised to power 6 last time as i have already discussed why we take uh, like this particular upper bound and then i create a uh, like is prime vector of the max size and all of them are marked with true so it is a boolean vector and for 0 and 1 i mark it as false because these are going to be composite numbers so first of all i push like minus 1 to my primes uh, list uh, this is just because to make the indexing a bit different because uh, like uh, for example the first prime number will be 2 so if i don't push this 2 will be at position 0 but if i push this 2 will become at position 1 right so this is the only reason i made this thing and uh, 
the then i what i do is this is just a standard c of eratosthenes i start from 2 i go till root max size right till i root i to i is less than max size i have already discussed why we do this and i'm just doing i plus plus so if the ith number is prime then for all the multiples of that particular number starting from i into i and uh, mark it as non prime right so this is basically what we do now for all the numbers uh, like in the in this particular vector that are still prime that are is prime is equals to true i push them into my primes vector right so once i have got the list of all the primes now this is my simple find function and this is my simple merge function for disjoint set and uh, this i created a disjoint set of size n with minus 1 minus 1 denoting that they are the parent of itself now for all the like uh, for all the vertices i'm just traversing their children so i is the vertex current vertex and j is the children of graph of i so this is an adjacency list i'm getting both parent and children by i minus 1 and j minus 1 i am finding them in my disjoint set and if they are not equal if the pa their parent and under not equal i am just merging them right so this is what is happening in this particular part right now we'll discuss these two functions a little bit later but let us discuss what happens for now you can just assume that find and the merge functions are to be some standard functions and uh, you can consider it as a black box so now what i basically have is i created the maximum size of a group to be 1 right i just traverse through the whole vector Uh, all the vertices from zero to less than n. Since I have taken zero based indexing, you will find it here also. I have taken i minus one and j minus one. So it is basically because of zero based indexing. Now uh, I just check whether my current element, right, or the current uh, index has less than zero size. Less than zero basically means that it is the parent of itself. If it is the parent of itself, that means I can just try to find the size of that particular component in which the current node is the parent, right? So i can take the absolute value of it and this will denote the size as i have already discussed our implementation how we implement this so we we are going to take the absolute value right once we have taken the absolute value this will uh, help me to find the maximum size of any connected component with the maximum size of any connected component at the end is equals to 1 that means basically there are no groups and each person is by its himself right so in that case they have asked us to print minus 1 this is what we do other otherwise maximum is denoting the size of the maximum group so we'll just return times of maximum right so i have taken max to be here and this is not a typo i just write it as nax because max is a function like standard function in or like c++ so we write it as nax just to avoid it so this is what you can do in this particular problem uh, still like uh, this problem was not difficult it was just a mixture of two different problems you can just like take do these these two different problems and merge them it will still it is still going to work so let us just, just quickly discuss this find and merge function so what i am basically doing is if the like if the current component has size less than 0 that means the current index is the parent of itself then i'll just return the current index otherwise i'll return find of dac of p so this line might seem simple but this is this one line optimization is called path compression and what i'm essentially doing is if if the current value is like uh, not negative right and it is pointing to some other index so i'll update its value as find of dsc of p so I'm, again i am recursively calling the same function on its parent right so i uh, like essentially get to know what was the final parent right so this is what we do now in the merge function i have two variables and i need to merge it so again this is also one line optimization and you, it might again seem simple but this one line optimization is called union by rank so basically since the more the negative value if my value of dsc of i is negative the more it is negative that means the size of the current component is bigger right now if the dsc of a is greater than dsc of b i'll just swap a f a and b so that a has the more bigger connected component now i'll merge the size of b into a and i'll set the parent of b as a this will help me to do union by rank and only the smaller connected component gets merged into the bigger connected component like this is what it ensures this one line optimization so you'll see like dsc is very like uh, magical kind of data structure and uh, with these one line optimizations you can reduce the complexity by a lot so that was all about today's problem of the day i hope that you guys were able to understand the solution so let me just quickly submit this and show it to you that this works the only thing that you need to take care of this in this particular question is that the upper bound that you take on the max size and the second thing is that you need to perform these operations of find and merge very carefully because sometimes you get wrong answers or just because you did not do it like in the correct way so you see that this problem passes all the test cases this particular solution and it is correct i hope that you guys were able to understand the solution if you guys did then consider dropping a like on this video 
and share your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe. I see a lot of people who watch these videos have not subscribed yet. So if you're one of them, then consider subscribing. And share this channel with your friends. Till the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe. Bye-bye.